I didn't take any of my own expert advice today. I didn't rope drop. I didn't book a lightning lane at 7 a.m. I showed up to Animal Kingdom in the afternoon, and we're gonna see if it's possible to still have a laid back day at Walt Disney World. Hey everybody, it's Molly with Mammoth Club and I'm here at Animal Kingdom, my favorite park in Walt Disney World, to see if it's even possible to have a relaxing laid back day at the theme parks anymore. I go to theme parks four or five times a week and I share my best tips and tricks with you to figure out how to navigate the parks. Cause let's face it, it's a little complicated these days. Between rope dropping and Genie Plus and figuring out lightning lanes, it can be a little complicated to go to Walt Disney World right now. And a lot of you have asked me, is it even possible to sleep in on your vacation? Can I get one relaxing day? Do I have to get up early and book Genie Plus? Do I have to rope drop and get to the park before it opens? We're gonna find out together. I'm at the most relaxing part in Walt Disney World. We're still gonna try and hit as many major attractions as we can this afternoon, see some shows, have some snacks, have a great day packed with all of your favorite activities, but at a more leisurely pace. I hope you're ready, I hope you're excited. Let's get to it. It's time to luxuriate. I came into Disney's Animal Kingdom a little before 1 p.m. today. I wanted to relax this morning. I had some work to catch up on, but imagine, if you will, that instead of working, you had a lovely breakfast, maybe over at Boma at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, or you had a character breakfast at your resort, or you just had some pool time. You just relaxed. You had a nice, enjoyable morning, and then you got to the park in the afternoon. Now, while I did not buy and book Genie Plus early this morning, right at 7 a.m., I kept an eye on the wait times as I was doing things around the house, and I noticed they were getting really, really long. Navi River Journey's at 95 minutes, Flight of Passage is at 75 minutes, Kelvin Jar's Bars is at 75 minutes, so around 10, 30, 11, I decided I wanted to buy it. And I went ahead and booked a meet and greet with Mickey and Minnie, because I actually haven't seen them in their cute little safari outfits since they've come back, and I would like to do that. This is all about luxuriating and having fun. I wanted to meet Mickey and Minnie. Plus, that one sells out really quick. That's kind of the tricky thing about Genie Plus, is that parks like Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios, and even Epcot at this point, you want to have it locked and loaded and ready to book right at 7 a.m. so that you can get the most bang for your buck. But here at Animal Kingdom, the wait times fluctuate so drastically that there's a lot of days you really don't need it because most lines are 30 minutes or less. So I was kind of waffling and was waiting to see what the lines were going to look like, which is why I didn't get up and book it this morning. We're having a more relaxing day. So I like the option that you can always buy and book it later. And sure, you might not get to use quite as many lightning lanes, but there aren't quite as many here to use as the other parks. So it kind of all balances out. You don't have to buy Genie Plus at Animal Kingdom, but if you aren't going to buy it and it's a busy day, that's when I do recommend getting here early, getting here for road drop and knocking out a bunch of stuff bright and early. But as I said, that's not the name of the game today. Today we are going to be relaxing. We're going to be luxuriating. I'm going to use Genie Plus as well as standby, but we're going to take it a little bit slower and a little bit easier and not rush around the park and just kind of have a more relaxing day. But like I said, we're still gonna try and get through a bunch of your favorites. I've got a list of 10 of my favorite things to do at Animal Kingdom, and I'd like to get through all 10, but in a much more calm and relaxing manner. And the first thing on that list, enjoy a coffee at my favorite spot in all of Walt Disney World. This is the trail behind the Tree of Life. The entrance to the trail is right across from Creature Comforts, which is the Starbucks in this park. And even on an incredibly busy day, like today, where Navi River Journey has a 95 minute wait, there's no one back here. This is my absolute favorite place to come and just relax. I like to get a coffee, the floats will go by. It's just absolutely beautiful back here. It allows me a minute to slow down, relax. I come back here pretty much every time I come to Animal Kingdom, so it's the perfect way to start a relaxing day. Time to go meet Mickey and Minnie. Conveniently, this trail leads you right to their mean greet. Oh, it's just so beautiful, weaving under the tree of life. There's over 300 creatures carved in there. Here's one of my favorites. Hello, Mr. Sharky, I love you. There's a kangaroo right here and a bunny. I just, I literally could spend hours staring at the tree of life and looking at every single root and nook and crane. Look at this elephant. Look at this elephant. That's amazing. And you wouldn't see it if you didn't take the time to just slowly enjoy this. It's time to go see Mickey and Minnie. And then I also, was able to book another lightning lane because of the 120 minute rule. So I booked Dinosaur for a little bit because it's uh, got a long wait right now and I'd like to see Dr. Seeker. I'm not gonna go real in depth with Genie Plus in this video. I've done that on several videos. I've done videos dedicated to explaining Genie Plus and the best tips and tricks. But one tip I will give you is that you can see at the top of the tip board when you're able to book a, your next one, set an alarm for that time. And then when that time rolls around, 
uh, start looking at the tip board and seeing what you want to book next. That way you kind of always know what's available and, and what's your plan. It's a little easier at this park than Magic Kingdom or Hollywood Studios because there's not that many attractions that sell out or are super, super high demand. So it's a little bit easier to maneuver. Oh my gosh, what a nice surprise. As I came to Mickey and Minnie's, Kevin was here. She's just a free roaming beautiful bird that roams around Asia and Discovery Island. So you never know when she's gonna come out. And I was very happy to catch her. What a lovely surprise. Hello. I love this spot. I love it. Yay. I love AO inside or outside. Besides Magic Kingdom, this is the only place that you can meet them together and get a picture with them all together. And it's very, very adorable. Uh, their safari outfits are so cute. And I just wanted a picture with Mickey and Minnie. So here we go. I will say the line for this can get very long. It was almost an hour earlier today. And the lightning lane does go pretty quickly. This was the first one to become unavailable for the day. Now you could always fiddle faddle and hope it comes back later, but it does close earlier than the park and it's really popular. So if you're looking to book something with a lightning lane, this is a good choice. But again, I booked it around 10.30 or so and I got a, a timer in the two o'clock hour. Hi, Mickey. How are you? You look so cute in your safari outfit. Hi, Mickey. I just love this outfit. This look is so good. Yeah, you look very dapper. You're ready to see a lot of animals. What animal do you want to see? Oh, an elephant. I love an elephant. Oh, a crocodile. I like the hyenas. Yeah, they're my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Can we take a picture together? Thank you. Oh, you guys are just the cutest. Thanks, Mickey and Minnie. <laughs> I've got a little bit of time before my next lightning lane, so I figured it's time for my first feeding. And I'm gonna share with you, I know I have a lot of favorites in this park. I talk about cheeseburger pods all the time. And don't worry, we will eat a cheeseburger pod today, but I'm gonna share with you a little known delicious lunch snack here in Animal Kingdom. Say hello to the street corn tacos from the Smiling Crocodile. The Smiling Crocodile is one of the small little stands on Discovery Island, which serves some pretty good eats. Uh, but these, again, they're street corn tacos. They've got black beans, roasted corn, poblano peppers, pickled red onions, and then they're topped with fresh pico de gallo, a chili, lime mayo, cotija cheese. You've got fresh limes to squeeze on them right there, and then they come with a side of chips and salsa. These are, I feel like, the most underrated thing you can eat in this park. I love fresh lime on a taco. It just zests it up. These are so good. They, first of all, actually have heat to them. So if you're a heated verse, I wouldn't go with this one, but that poblano pepper plus the chili lime mayo actually has a little bit of zest, a little fire in the mouth, but it's not just hot for hot sake. There's a ton of flavor in these as well. We've got that roasted street corn, a little bit of nutty saltiness from that cotija cheese. I love, again, the zest of the fresh lime. They do have a pork and chicken version of these as well. Um, but if you're looking for something a little lighter, maybe vegetarian option, I discovered these a few months ago and I truly think that behind my beloved cheeseburger pods, these are my second favorite meal in this entire park. And this is a park with great food. So that's saying something. Getting some chips and salsa now. I saw this hilarious meme today that it was like when you're a kid, you get salsa like this, like you barely get the salsa on it because you just want to eat the chip. And then as an adult, you're like, give me all the goods. Give me all the salsa. I related to that. Mm, I'm good, both of them. Salsa verde, very flavorful, tastes very fresh. Love the peppers in there. It tastes like there's a little lime in there as well. I just spilled it on myself because of course I did. I'm wearing white. Worth it. It's time for my dinosaur lightning lane, but I hear the ticklings of the Viva Gaia street band. I love live entertainment at the theme parks, especially this park. So I'm going to have to stop and dance a little bit with that. after watching the band if you want to see real magic watch the crowd at a live performance in a theme park there were kids of all ages from tiny toddlers to teenagers dancing with their parents which 
parents of teenagers. When does that ever happen? Grandparents dancing with their grandchildren, couples dancing. It's just like, if you take a second <laughs> to slow down, those are the memories you remember. Because I have memories like that with my parents and my pa grandparents watching the seasons of Hollywood or the bands or like whatever the street atmosphere is. So as much as I know you want to get everything done, and we are going to get a lot done, like I implore you to stop and listen to the band and take a breather and enjoy your company that you're with. Because otherwise, what's the point? But if there's something truly magic when you watch a live performance. Headed into Dino Land USA. It is very busy at this park today. I don't remember the last time I saw this park this busy, but I have a lightning lane to go see Dr. Grant Seeker and the Carnotaurus. One tip I will give you, even on a laid back day, is you still wanna make sure you know what you wanna accomplish. Still do your research. Don't come into these parks blind and just like hope that something fun happens. Make sure that you know the things you wanna do. Look up the show times, look up the band times. That band I just saw was Viva Gaia. They're listed in the app. The band in Harambe, the Africa section's listed in the app. Festival of the Lion King, all the stuff is listed in the app. So make sure you still know what times things are happening so you don't miss something but allow yourself to be a little bit more flexible, especially on days like today. Very excited to try dinosaur. Looks like they're doing work on the Iguanodon's pond here, but nonetheless, very excited to ride dinosaur. Excited to have a lightning lane as well because it's got a 40, four zero minute wait right now. Dinosaur's interesting because unlike Flight of Passage, hello, or safaris. Thank you. The wait time really wavers on this one. Sometimes it's 70 minutes, sometimes it's 10 minutes. So this isn't one you need to prioritize if you're doing Genie Plus, especially if you're doing it all day long. You definitely want to book things like Nairobi River Journey, Kilimanjaro Safaris, and meeting Mickey and Minnie first. But if you want to ride Dinosaur, you've already purchased Genie Plus, you might as well use it here so you don't have to worry about kind of watching the wait time and you can just do it whenever you'd like. Dinosaur has a 40 inch height requirement, which is lower than Expedition Everest or Flight of Passage, but it's also scarier than either of those because it's loud, it's dark, it rattles you around, and you know, there's big giant dinosaurs that chase after your car. So I always recommend knowing your children before signing them up for this ride. All right, I'm able to book my next lightning lane. I do have Flight of Passage booked, which I'm gonna do after this. Already done Dinosaur. I do want to ride Everest today, so that's something to consider. Festival of the Lion King, though, there's only one more show I could book Lightning Lane for. Safaris, I want to book that for a little bit later today because I want to see the hyenas, and it has a 55-0 minute wait right now. Meeting Mickey and Minnie has a 75 minute wait. Glad we did that. Navi River Journey has a 55-0 minute wait. I think I'm going to book Festival of the Lion King. Uh, just because since I've paid for Genie Plus, might as well use it there, so I've guaranteed a seat at the last show. And now it's time to face the Carnotaurus. I adore this attraction. It's one of my favorites. Fun little detail on the wall over there. It says Sector CTX WDI AK-98. That stands for Countdown to Extinction, which was the original name of this attraction, Walt Disney Imagineering and Animal Kingdom 98, because that's the year this park opened. I did a whole video on fun secrets and Easter eggs and stuff like that in this park, so we'll link that for you if you're into that kind of thing. I'm Dr. Moss, director of the Dino Institute. All right, folks. I'm Dr. Secret, your friendly controller and a heck of a paleontologist, if I do say so myself. Not our dino, but at least this one's a vegetarian. Short and sweet trip to Dino Land USA, and now we're headed over to Pandora, the world of Avatar, to ride Flight of Passage. Now, Flight of Passage is a fancy ride, which means it's an individual cost to ride it. It's not included in Genie Plus. If you'd like to skip the line, you need to pay a separate per person fee. Today was $11. Fancy rides are available for resort guests at 7 a.m. and non-resort guests at the time the park opens, which is 8 a.m. TBH, I hit snooze twice on my 8 a.m. alarm, so I didn't actually look till closer to 8.30, but I was able to easily snag one from 2.45 to 3.45, which seemed like a good move because it's had at least an hour wait the whole time I've been in the park, and it tends to have an hour wait, if not longer, pretty much all the time. If you didn't want to pay for it, which I fully understand, especially considering me paying for one person versus a family of four or six paying for it are two very different dollar amounts. This is when rope dropping 
especially as a Disney World Resort guest comes in handy because you can get in early and get in line and hopefully wait 45 minutes or less if you're here real early. But that means early, early, because this park typically opens at 7.30 for resort guests. That's wild. So basically, like with anything, you're gonna have to prioritize what's important to you and your family. Is sleeping in and relaxing more important to you? Is staying at a Disney World resort and getting the most out of that early hours important to you? Is saving money important to you? Is skipping the line important to you? There's many ways to ride this attraction, but you just have to decide which one's best for you and your family. Flight of Passage has a 44 inch height requirement and it is that 3D simulator that puts you in, on the back of the mythical Ikron, or better known as a Banshee, as you sail over the Valley of Moara, as seen in James Cameron's epic film, Avatar. Avatar 2, coming soon. Hashtag, not an ad. Though Avatar 2 is coming soon, I'll probably see it. I liked the first one just fine. It's basically Fern Gully in space. Not my favorite movie of all time, but it was very pretty. And I'm sure the second one will be pretty too. My thing about Pandora is that I think the land is amazing. It's absolutely stunningly gorgeous. It's more than I could have ever dreamed up. It just doesn't feel like a franchise that everybody's like obsessed with. This is Disney's answer to Harry Potter. And even if you love Avatar or know someone that loves Avatar, I think we can all agree it doesn't touch the cultural relevance of Harry Potter. One note I will make about the lightning lane is you do cut off the vast majority of the queue, and this is a pretty fun queue. You walk through the bioluminescent forest, you walk through the science lab where there's a large avatar floating in a tank. So it is a very cool queue. I don't know that it's worth waiting in a multi-hour line to see it, but if you haven't been on it before, that may be another factor in uh, what your plan is to tackle this attraction. We need you to enter the room and stand on your assigned number. They're created by blending human DNA and Navi DNA. Once we do that, you'll be able to link to that avatar and uh, fly. It's like they're ready for you in the next room. Uh, when the door opens, check that really is just a beautiful attraction i love that part in the cave with like the wisps from brave and it all turns pink and you feel the banshee breathing and then taking off beneath you it's just it is really really neat i understand why it's some people's favorite attraction in all of Walt disney world though i still prefer dinosaur or everest because i like an actually physically moving attraction versus a simulator you can't deny that that is beautiful also it took me way longer than it should have to realize that's not Sigourney Weaver in the pre-show. And I just thought I'd share that in case you also thought it was Sigourney Weaver for a long time. Or maybe till right now you thought it was Sigourney Weaver. And speaking of Sigourney Weaver, I know a lot of people know her from Alien, but my first introduction to Sigourney Weaver was in the film Galaxy Quest, where she appeared alongside Buzz Lightyear and Severus Snape. And they're about to put on a command performer. Tim Allen, Sigourney Weaver, Alan Rickman, Galaxy Quest. A hilarious film if you haven't seen it. If you know what I'm talking about, drop it in the comments. Now I've got a little bit of time before my lightning lane for Festival of the Lion King. So while I was in line preparing to board Flight of Passage, I placed a mobile order at Satuli Canteen. This is my favorite quick service spot in the parks. It's home to one of my favorite Disney foods. Have to have that on our lovely afternoon, I'd say. Satuli Canteen is known for their famous bowls where you choose a protein, tofu, shrimp, chicken, steak. You choose a base from noodles, salad, rice, and then you choose a sauce on top. That's their most signature item. 
but they also have one thing that just makes me so happy inside and it's the cheeseburger pods. It's been a while since we've had a feeding and this might be one of my all time favorites in a theme park. So this is my beloved cheeseburger pod. This is a kid's meal portion. If you get the adult's meal, it comes with two of the pods and some slaw and such. But basically it's a McDonald's cheeseburger shoved into a bao bun. It comes with some house made chips. And when you get the kid's meal, it also comes with some fruit and a choice of drink. I always like to grab the little water bottle. Pro tip, always get the side of creamy herb dressing. It's their version of ranch. It's fabulous. And I also couldn't resist because we're luxuriating today. We're relaxing today. This is the Hawks Grog Ale. This is a signature beer that you can only get here in Pandora. It is a fruity wheat beer. If you know me, you know I love a custom theme park beer. And this is one of my all-time favorites, if not my all-time favorite of any theme park. They're just so delicious and I'm very pro eating unique custom things in a theme park that you can't get other places. And this is certainly a very unique twist on a cheeseburger. I get them all the time. 10 out of 10. And I just love getting kids meals because it's the same food but for a much lower price. And you get a smaller portion which Disney portions are huge in general. But the more kids meals you eat, the more snacky stuff you eat, the more different things you can eat. And that's always my philosophy. Even growing up, coming on vacation, we would plan like one big meal a day, usually a late breakfast. So it could kind of be breakfast and lunch and then eat snacks the rest of the day or eat kids meals the rest of the day. Cause I want to try as many delicious things as possible. And you just can't do that if you're eating full meals every time you're hungry. Ate fast and scooted to Africa along the path in between the two lands so that I can get into Festival of the Lion King before my return window closes. Festival of the Lion King is my favorite thing in this park, maybe in all of Walt Disney World. It's an amazing about 30 minute show featuring live performers, acrobats, the music of the Lion King. It's very, very popular. So while you don't need a lightning lane, you could just get in line 30 or so minutes before showtime and you would probably get a seat. Uh, I like to book it if I have purchased Genie Plus just to guarantee I have a spot. You can see how busy it is today by looking at the standby line. This is the latest show in the day. Normally by this time the line is not around that much longer but it's just been a busy day here. Which leads me to my next tip. If you do want to see the show, coming to a later one is better. This park does tend to be the less busy in the late afternoon evening because it closes the earliest. So a lot of people tend to go over to Epcot or Magic Kingdom, which stay open later and have big nighttime shows. The downfall with that is a lot of stuff here isn't available because a lot of it features live entertainment or live animals. So things like Safari, Festival of the Lion King, Finding Nemo don't stay open as long as the park does. show that brings a tear to my eyeball. I love it so much. It is still busy, busy at this park, which is pretty rare in the evening time, but we are still having a lovely, relaxing day. After I tapped in at Festival of the Lion King, and pro tip, most attractions you can be a few minutes late, like maybe 10 or 15 minutes late, and they'll still let you in. That is not true of shows, because shows got to get started. So you cannot be late if you're going to Festival of the Lion King. Make sure you get there on time. But after I tapped in, I went ahead and booked a lightning lane for Kilimanjaro Safaris. It was readily available. And by now, the hyenas should be out. Kilimanjaro Safaris is the flagship attraction at the park. It's that 20 to 25 minute, could be longer if an animal gets in your path, safari truck ride out in the Harambe Wildlife Reserve, where you get to see real animals such as elephants, lions, giraffes, antelope, rhinos, and my personal favorite, the hyenas. I adore hyenas. 
I fell in love with hyenas when I went to real Africa and saw them and thought they were so cute, like a little puppy and a bear had a beautiful little spotted baby. And I learned that hyenas are often depicted as scavengers. However, they actually are better hunters than lions. Plus, they're a matriarchal society, which means in the pack order, the lowest ranking female outranks the highest ranking male. And I like that. Both sides are gonna be and the reason that I'm coming late to see the hyenas is because they share an exhibit space with the African painted dogs, and they don't switch them on set until way later in the afternoon, usually around four or five o'clock. So my best pro tips for Kilimanjaro safaris are to either come first thing in the morning, because the cooler it is, the more active the animals are. So the first safari out the gate is usually a great one. You can usually see the lions or come as late as possible in the day, later in the day, because not only do you get to see the hyenas, but it's feeding time and it's again cooler out. So you're more likely to see some animal activity. Going in the middle of the day, while you're still gonna have a great time, because this is a phenomenal attraction and animals are awesome no matter what, but going in the middle of the day means the likelihood of seeing animals such as the lions is a lot lower because they'll be inside the shaded areas that you can't see to cool off. Plus in the middle of the day the line is usually pretty long. Earlier today I saw it well over an hour 70-80 minutes throughout parts of the day. But one thing to keep in mind of is that this does close earlier than the rest of the park so make sure you look in the app or ask a cast member what time safaris closes because the park stays open a little bit later uh, so you can ride things like Everest and Flight of Passage and see the Tree of Life projections. I'd hate for you to wait to the end of the night to ride safari thinking you could jump in a shorter line only for it to close before you get here. safari. There was some great lion action, really good rhino action, giraffes, the cheetah was up. Most importantly, the hyena was out, had a fabulous safari guide named Bella, a wonderful safari. This is why I tell you to wait till the end of the day if you're not going to go first thing in the morning. I've done two things on the app since we last spoke. One, after I tapped in over at safari, I went ahead and booked a lightning lane for Expedition Everest. At this point, like half the rides still have really long lines and half don't. There's an hour wait or longer at meeting Mickey and Minnie and both of the rides in Pandora. However, Everest, Dinosaur, and Safaris are all 20 minutes or less at this point. But hey, we got Lightning Lane, might as well use it over at Everest. The second thing I did was sent a cast compliment to my fabulous Safari driver. This is a new-ish feature of the app I would love to highlight for you all. If you go to the hamburger menu in My Disney Experience and scroll down, you can see cast compliment. There is a box where you select what the cast member did with like pre-filled out answers. So just pick the one closest to what you'd like to say. Uh, you fill out where that cast member was. So what land, what park, attractions, custodial, food and beverage, etc. And then if you remember it, write the cast member's name and uh, their hometown or their university that's on their name tag and the date of your interaction. That's it, and speaking as a former cast member, when someone acknowledges that you've made their day, it really means a lot. So cast members are the best, and that's an easy peasy way that you can say thank you to them, especially if they make a special magical memory for you. Eek, it's time to go face the Yeti. I keep saying things are my favorite in this park, but then it's like a new thing becomes my favorite. I just love this park so much. Uh, until Cosmic Rewind, the Expedition Everest Legend of the Forbidden Mountain TM was definitely my favorite coaster at Walt Disney World. It's just such a fun coaster. It's so incredibly well themed. There's so much detail. I'm going to once again call back to that Secrets and Details video where I walk through the whole backstory that a lot of people don't even realize, including why it's called Expedition Everest Legend of the Forbidden Mountain TM. The height requirement for Expedition Everest is one Yeti feet tall, which measures out to 44 inches. Same thing as Flight of Passage. And like I said earlier, this one does wax and wane as far as the wait time goes. It's only 10 minutes right now. Even in the peak part of the day, this had a lower wait than Dinosaur, than Kilimanjaro Safaris, than Flight of Passage. So this one, you can usually jump on it 30 minutes or less, even on a very busy day like today. They also have single rider where your party will be split up, but usually you can get on it even faster if you'd like to maybe ride it a second or third time. Thank you. This attraction is so fun. 
I love all the theming. I love all the detail. Okay, I, I can't resist spilling this fun fact. They got a lot of the props and the artifacts and the hiking gear. It's all real. It's all authentic. They got a lot of it in Nepal. And the last time I was here telling the fun facts for that video, one of the cast members let me know that there's this organization that in the spring, every year, they hike up Everest and they gather all of the hiking gear and things people left behind during their treks up the mountain so that it doesn't ruin the nature of the mountain so that they can preserve the beauty of the mountain and then a lot of those artifacts ended up here what i'm telling you is that there's people whose job every year is to just casually hike up the tallest mountain in the world and collect things like a treasure hunt could not be me First of all, this park in the evening is just gorgeous. It's gorgeous all the time, but the sky right now and the lights, ugh, it's amazing. Joe Rody, you're a genius. Second of all, Expedition Everest is so fun. It's a must do. I love that attraction. That one is very fun to do at night. So if you are sticking around here after dark, check out Everest at night. It's a whole new experience. And number three for our final activity today on our wonderful, relaxing Animal Kingdom day, I have joined the walk-up wait list at my favorite lounge inside a park. We're gonna go have one more relaxing final moment here at Animal Kingdom. Perfect timing, just got my text back. We're headed to the Nomad Lounge, which is right next to Tiffin's, the signature restaurant, which fun fact, Tiffin's is the name of the canisters up here. It's the name of like a lunch pail. So you can see that one has a spoon. They're very ornate and beautiful, but that's what Tiffin's means. But the Nomad Lounge is this gorgeous lounge right here. It's got an indoor and an outdoor seating section. I love the wraparound porch. When the flotillas are going by, you can see them. They've got really good cocktails, fun light bites as well. It's one of my favorite places to just escape and luxuriate. Oh, look at this. Doesn't even feel like you're in a theme park anymore. You're now in a treehouse oasis. Taking a look at the Light Bites menu, they've got a rotating specials. Um, right now they have a, a corn sweet potato soup, that will change. They do a charcuterie, a lobster mac and cheese. The Gobi Manchurian is crispy fried cauliflower. It's fabulous. A poke, um, some ribs, pork belly. They also have a phenomenal bread service you can do. And then they do monthly specials as well. This month they're celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, so they have specials that go with that, like birria tacos, tres leche cake, special um, beverages as well. What I love about the Nomad Lounge too, in addition to the great ambiance and the atmosphere, is that the cocktails are all really unique. They have basically their twist on any classic cocktail you can think of. So for example, I love an old fashioned. Their twist on it is called the Tempting Tigress. Um, they've got several rum drinks, gin drinks. They have boozy coffees. Uh, they have a phenomenal sangria made fresh, not out of a box of South American wine. They've got a High Tower Rocks, which is like a watermelon margarita. The Snow Leopard Salvation is made with Snow Leopard vodka which a portion of that actually goes to help save wild snow leopards. And then they've got a great list of wine. A lot of it is South American and African, and they have some great exotic beers as well. Now, Nomad Lounge can get very popular, especially on busy days like today, which is why I recommend using the walk-up wait list in the app. It will give you an estimated wait time. You can sign up and they'll send you a text or a push notification when it's your turn to come back. Sometimes it says the walk-up wait list is full, but never fear. Don't lose hope. Keep checking back and usually it opens up and you can grab a spot. But it's really nice because you can go about your day. You don't have to worry about waiting in a line or waiting for a table and they'll let you know when it's your turn to enjoy the nomad lounge after hearing that i love an old-fashioned it's probably not shocking that i did in fact get the tempting tigress this is my go-to order here it is 10 year old russell reserves bourbon some allspice dram tamarind syrup and lime juice so the tamarind and the allspice is how they mix it up and make it different than your classic old-fashioned cheers oh it's so good it is so good mm. There's a little tartness because of the lime. And definitely taste that booze. It's definitely a booze-heavy cocktail. 
And then the tamarind and the allspice add that unique savory flavor that you don't expect with an old-fashioned, but it's still a familiar cocktail just with a twist. The Imagineers traveled all over the world to create this park. They went to South America and Asia and Africa and all over the world to make this park, and that is very true here when you look at the menu and the different courses offered. It's maybe not for the pickiest eaters, that so they can get you things like macaroni and cheese, but if you are looking for somewhere to relax, to luxuriate, to have something a little bit more exciting, have a really unique cocktail, and just a very fabulous, otherworldly theme park experience, I can't recommend Nomad Lounge enough. Well, friends, that is a wrap on our luxurious and relaxing afternoon here in Disney's Animal Kingdom. I think we proved that you don't have to rope drop, you don't have to get up at 7 a.m. to book a lightning land, and you can still have a fabulous day in the Disney parks. Well, at least this Disney park. I think the point I was trying to make is that if you want a jam-packed day, if you want to guarantee you get the most out of your day, yes, you should absolutely be booking those lightning lanes at 7. You should get here early, especially if you don't want to pay for Flight of Passage or pay for Genie Plus in general. But you can still enjoy your vacation. You can relax. Make sure you still prioritize what attractions you want to do and what things you want to make happen. Use the app to your advantage. Look at those show times. Look at those concert times. Understand how Genie Plus works in case you are going to use that. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this was a very relaxing video. I know I had a great time making it. Let us know what else you want to see down in the comments. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it's been magical and very luxurious. Bye. If you need me, I'll be right here.